viewers welcome to the course mud data mining our today's topic is clustering and applications second part myself priyanka gupta working as assistant professor in the department of computer science and engineering data science department in the uh, iir college hyderabad so for the today's lecture i am going to cover the topics are summary what we have covered till now supervised versus unsupervised learning classification versus prediction classification versus clustering categorization for major clustering methods in uh, in this we have already covered pars partitioning method k method k mean method we have covered now we will cover the k medoid clustering method and the pam partitioning around medoids 1986 it 1987 it has been invented in this uh, we will cover the k medoid clustering method and another is pam partitioning around medoid clustering method so till now we have covered the cluster analysis what was cluster a collection of data objects here we have to uh, we have to search for the similarity of the clusters to one another similarity to one another within the same cluster another we have to find out the dissimilarity to the objects in and other clusters in cluster analysis we have to do a grouping of a set of data objects into the cluster right then clustering is the unsupervised classification right clustering is the unsupervised classification because it has been not supervised by the classification for the different levels that is that is no predefined classes the typical applications were for clustering analysis as a stand alone tool to get insight into the data distributions right second is as a pre processing step for the other algorithms we have also covered the general applications of clustering that is pattern recognition is spatial data analysis in that we have to create the thematic maps in uh, geometric in si systems by clustering feature spaces so we have also covered the general applications of clustering in that we have covered pattern recognition spatial data analysis which was for geo spatial images in that we have to create the thematic maps in gis by clustering features spaces and also we had to detect the spatial clusters and then we need to explain them in spatial data mining we have covered the image processing we have covered economic science which is especially using for the market research so we have taken some examples for that we have covered the world wide web that is in that we have covered the document classification so we have taken example for that in that we have to also cluster the web log data to discover groups of similar access pattern right so what was the good clustering if we have done a clustering so what are the features we can identify is it good or bad so the good clustering method will produce high quality clusters which is having the high inter class similarity as well as the low inter class similarity so on the basis of the, these two features we will be able to identify whether the clustering is good or not right so whether it is having the these two fun these two features it would be uh, basically good clustering so the quality of a clustering result depends on the both the similarity measure used by the method and its implementation right so it the result will be a, uh, depends on the similarity measure right so for this we have used the formula to measure the similarity right and its implementation so we will be able to find some result after the calculation next is the quality of a clustering method is also measured by 
its ability to discover some of all of the hidden pattern right if you are having the some type of pattern so we will be also able to measure the ability to discover its hidden patterns while we are using the clustering method right so there are types of data in clustering analysis the data data the data can be of interval scaled variables binary variables nominal ordinal and ratio variables and variables of mixed types so uh, we have uh, also taken the example for the all the variables in deep so what type of data we are having on the basis of that we need to uh, create the cluster what is the difference between the supervised and unsupervised learning so that is a uh, class classification is nothing but the supervised learning so uh, it it is having the supervision right it is having the supervision that is comes under the training data if we are going to give the training data as well as well as with the test data we will be able to supervise the new data which is coming for uh, we we can we will be able to predict the uh, new prediction for that right so on the basis of the training data we, we will be able to find the new observations new predictions for the uh, same sub, sub type of data type data set so the training data which can be observation measurements are accompanied by labels that is nothing but class labels right that is indicating the class of the observation the new data is classified based on the training set so on the basis of the training set only it is uh, going to supervise the uh, prediction for the new data what is unsupervised learning the clustering uh, we have covered till now that is nothing but the unsupervised learning right so the class levels of training data will be unknown and then we will uh, going to do the clustering for that right so uh, the on the basis of the data on the basis of the data set we will be able to identify why, whether we need to classify them whether we need to cluster them right so if we will able to uh, get the class level for the training data so we will use the supervised learning otherwise if uh, that is unknown we will be able to do the unsupervised learning that is nothing but the clustering right so in that uh, given a set of measurement observe observations etc with the aim to establish the existence of classes or cluster in the data so that will be able to uh, that will be able to establish a new cluster a cluster for the some of the classes or we can say the clusters for the same data so that was the difference between the supervised and unsupervised learning so uh, what is the difference between classification and prediction we have covered the classification as well as prediction so sometimes we confuse with the both terms so uh, what is classification Cla uh, and uh, what is prediction in classification we know the class levels and we are going to classify them on the basis of the class levels <coughs> and in prediction we are going to predict about the something future in this slide we are going to uh, identify about the classification and prediction difference so uh, here classification and uh, predi prediction is nothing but the classification is based on the class levels and in that we have to classify the uh, the some labels for that and for the prediction we are going to uh, predict about the future on the basis of the data set right so classification differs from the prediction in that the former is to construct a set of models or we can say some of the functions right so that that is describing and distinguish the data class as well as the concepts whereas the latter it is going to predict the uh, for the prediction it is going to be predict some missing or unavailable and often numerical and data value so this was the difference between the classification and prediction their similarity is that 
they are both tools for the prediction right classification is used for the predicting the class level of data objects and prediction is typically used for the predicting missing numeric data value so uh, their similarity is the uh, that they are both tools for the prediction the classification is used for the predicting the class level on the basis of the data objects and the prediction is basically typically used for the predicting missing numeric value right so what is the difference between classification and clustering that is also comes in our mind basically uh, classification we are having for the predefined classes right so in general in classification we are having a set of predefined classes and want to know which class is uh, it belongs to which of the class which are the new object it belong to the which of the class right and uh, as well as the clustering that is trying to group a set of objects in clustering we need to uh, we need to group some of the classes some of the objects and whether we are, uh, we are going to find there is some relationship between the objects existing or not so that is the difference between the classification and clustering in the context of machine learning we can say classification is the supervised learning and as well as clustering is the unsupervised learning right so we have taken the example for why uh, we are calling the classification is as the supervised learning and uh, clustering is uh, we are saying as the unsupervised learning so that was all about the classification and clustering difference in that uh, we uh, in the partitioning clustering we have covered the k means algorithm right what is partitioning clustering the partitioning clustering is nothing but it is going to construct various partitions and then uh, uh, it is going to evaluate them for the some criteria right so here in this uh, in this graph we can see in this picture we can see the original points original data points Uh, which is having uh, like some clusters type uh, uh, formation here and this is the also a cluster but not uh, that is difference is too much high right so that is a example of some original points right in this uh, another example while we have done the partitioning clustering here we have found the three types of clusters which is having the um, some of the objects in that right so we have partitioned the same of the some of the data points on the basis of some criteria right so suppose we are given a database of a, n objects that then the partitioning method construct a k partition of the data right so each partition will represent a cluster this is a cluster right so and the k is less than and equal to m right it means that it will classify the data into the k of the groups it will classify the data into the k groups that is going to satisfy the following requirements so the first requirement is each group contain at least one object for example in this uh, picture we are having three cluster right and uh, here in this cluster we are having five type of objects five objects here also we are having six five objects here we are having six objects right so what is the require requirement for that there should be uh, have a minimum one objects for the one cluster right so that is the first requirement for the second requirement each object must belong to the exactly one of the group right so these are the two requirement we need to fulfill while we are going to classify some of the uh, data set some of the data points in the partition clustering so uh, we have uh, covered the k means algorithm but whether there is some limitations for that so what are that limitations k means has some problems when clusters are of different sizes different densities and if it is having the non globular shapes right so there can be some problem or some of the error while we are forming the clustering they, they can be based on the sizes density and the shapes of the images right so k means has the problem when the data contains outlier 
only and only the problem occurs when the data is having the outlier right so in this example in this picture we can see the uh, that is based on the differing sizes right so here uh, we can see the original points original points that is having the two clusters right uh, in the first clusters that is shown in the blue points that is the first cluster and the other cluster is uh, the second that is uh, visible in the red of the diet and yes also there is a uh, one uh, another cluster that is the that is uh, showing in the light blue color that is the third cluster so that was that is the original points in the data sets while we have done the k means algorithm we have completed the k means algorithm uh, after applying that we are, we have found the three clusters right the first cluster that is uh, having the light blue color right so this is having the uh, sum of the data points and the center of that it is uh, exists somewhere here the center of the this cluster that is uh, that is exists somewhere here so the center of the cluster we are going to denote by the plus sign right thus another cluster that is uh, showing in the red color that have the that is also uh, having the uh, between the in uh, both of the clusters so we are having some uh, points between them and the center will be here somewhere for the third cluster we are having the some data points nearby near data points nearer data points that is having the center somewhere here so uh, by, uh, whether we have applied the k means algorithm we have found the three clusters but uh, what is the difference between the first original point and the while we have done the k means part uh, k means algorithm partitioning then we can see here uh, the cluster the first cluster that is having the few data points right that is having the few of the data points the second cluster that is having the more of the data points uh, uh, in comparison to the first and third right so that is the not based on the density that is having the irregular data points the, the, uh, the distribution of the data is not correct right so while we are uh, so after we are applying the clustering method k means uh, then we will be able to find the similar uh, similar density in the each of the clusters so that is the difference while we are applying the clustering method of any type so uh, after applying the k means algorithm we will be able to find the these three and the center point of the clusters ha huh. in this slide uh, we are having the different density right in this slide we are having the different density data we are having the data points here in the red here in the blue and here in the light blue so the uh, here the different densities that is exist uh, very very far from the each cluster we can see the distance between the cluster is very very much that is too much so either we also will be able to apply the uh, k means algorithm and then uh, we can say the first in the first cluster by uh, in the first example we are having the original points for the one cluster but in that we can classify that also and we will be able to uh, if we be able to form a one cluster either having the second uh, group of clusters also in between so that is the that is the second cluster and for the third cluster it has divided into uh, it has been clubbed by that was the first and that was the third so in the in the for the third cluster the second and third original point has been clubbed for the k means algorithm while we have applied the k means algorithm so that was the based on the different type of densities right so that is the difference between them so there can be limitation because what we can see here there is the there is much much uh, densities is coming in the third of the uh, third th third cluster there is a so many there are so many density is coming either in a one single cluster right there are so many points there are so many points 
so this can be the limitation for the k means algorithm right so the distance and the less dis distance and the far distance it can be the limitation for the different uh, densities of data sets if you are having the non globular shapes like this in the uh, original point we can see here we are having the uh, two clusters that is denoted in uh, that is showed in the red ma uh, red of the points and second is blue second is in blue points so here by why we are applying the k means algorithm the uh, the first uh, here we can see either it can be formed like here can be uh, the first cluster can be cleft from the second cluster also right so here uh, we can say uh, we can say there can be some possibility of uh, the uh, errors there can be the outliers right there can be the outliers so that is the limitations of the k means algorithm for the some data points some of the shapes some uh, these are the features so how we are going to overcome from the k means limitation right so one solution is to use the many clusters while we are uh, here we can say in the in this original picture there are three clusters there are three clusters right so why either we are applying the k means algorithm we need to classify the clusters more and more there can be a many clusters then we need to find the parts of the clusters but don't need to put together so that is the example for different sizes so here there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 clusters out of the same data sets same data points right so that is the overcoming for the k means limitation but yes although there can be some outliers from the different clusters right so this is a one cluster this is a one cluster one cluster so there can be outlier from the uh, while this is connecting from the other cluster so this was the overcome that is a one possibility we can uh, we can classify more of the clusters the second uh, example for different densities here also we can uh, use the many clusters as we have seen for the different sizes so for the same uh, original points we are having the three clusters right we are having the three clusters here uh, how many clusters we have divided 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so here we have taken we have divided the data set, data points into the 10 of the clusters so like that for the uh, uh, different non globular shapes we can have also the uh, we can have to classify more and more of the clusters so for the same uh, same original point we have uh, divided the clusters into 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so like that we can overcome from the k means limitations and also we can say the k means algorithm is sensitive to the outliers because the um, the more the more cluster we we will able to uh, we will able to classify the outliers can come what i said so that there is a possibility to uh, for the outliers or noise we can say right so that is the only possibility we can uh, use many clusters in k means so either from the limitation we are going to use the k medoid algorithm right so what is k medoid clustering method the clus the k medoid problem is a clustering problem similar to k means right the name was coined by the leonard kaufman and peter j rasow with the pam algorithm right both the k means and k medoids algorithm are partitional right breaking the data set into the groups and attempt to minimize the distance between the points labeled to be in the same cluster for a one cluster and a point designated as the center of that cluster right so the both is based on the uh, partition but while we are having some limitations in k means we are going to use the k medoid clustering algorithm for that we need to uh, find the representative objects called medoid in clusters so the uh, center the center we are ha having in the k means right we are finding the center of the in 
objects or clusters in the uh, K means here we are calling uh, that is a may K medoid, medoids, right? So in the cluster we are having to uh, K medoids, right? So it is uh, the partitioning around medoids. It has been invented in the 1987. We have to start in the algorithm the initial set of medoids and then iteratively replaces one of the medoids by one of the non-medoid, right? If it improves the total distance of the resulting clustering. After that, the uh, algorithm works effectively for the sum small data sets, but does not scale well for the large data set. So that is one limitation for k-medoid data sets, k-medoids algorithm on the larger data sets. So uh, the partitioning around medoid algorithm that uh, that came into the knowledge in 1986, the PAM stands for partition around medoids. The algorithm that is intended to find a sequence of objects called medoids, right? And that for centrally located in the centers. So the PAM that is inv invented by Kaufman and Rousseau in 1986 built in S plus that is S plus that is a uh, some software right so what is the algorithm we need to use a real object to represent the cluster in that we need to select k representative objects arbitrarily for each pair of non-selected object h and selected object i we need to calculate the total swapping cost t c i h t c i h right total cost right total cost that is a swapping cost for each of the pair of uh, i and h we need to mm, we need to satisfy the two conditions if the tcih is less than 0 is replaced by h it is going to replace by the h right the second condition is then it is going to assign each non selected object to the most similar representative object right so in this example in this picture we can see the two clusters right we, uh, we can see the two clusters that is having four point first cluster is having four points second cluster is having also four points no this is having five points this is also having five points so here we uh, while we are going to uh, use the uh, partitioning method, while we are going to partitioning method, that is uh, the K medoid, right? So in this, we need to we need to identify the I, the H, and the J for that, right? So here, the total swapping cost uh, we need to uh, identify, right? On the basis of the these three and four factors, that is nothing but uh, I, H, and J, and T, right? So, um, in this, we need to uh, we need to select the we need to assign the each non-selected object to the most similar representative objects. And after that, we have to repeat the steps two and three until there is no change, no other change, right? So after that, it will stop for the searching, right? So uh, the total swapping cost formula is. Uh, to uh, to calculate the uh, for that the formula is T C I H is equal to summation of J C J I H. So this is the formula for swapping cost measuring. While we are going to uh, while we are going to uh, find the total swapping cost, right? Where we can say the C J I H is the cost of swapping i with h swapping i with h while we are going to swap the i with h that is that is the formula uh, we have to keep in c j i h for the all non medoid objects j and the uh, and the other term that is having the c j i h that is a very very depending upon the different cases that will depend on the different different cases so thank you for watching we have covered the uh, second part of the clustering like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates